the other way. Mm -hmm. There we go. That's stopped on the bit of rope. So now let's see if we can get this pulley undone. Without flicking the engine off the stand. Um, hmm. I really don't fancy dropping this engine off the stand. One, it'll break things, two, it'll make an almighty mess, and three, I won't be able to pick it back up again. There we go. Drive dog slash crank pulley bolt. One compressor pulley. One pulley and that is keyed onto the <coughs> so now I'll go get go get my old oil drain drum and a funnel. Take all the oil out of that. And of course, I sit on the side you can't see because I'm smart like that. Just to stand your nerve, and you'll just have to be careful. No jumping up and down, mate. Eh?
Thankfully, I know that happened while I was pulling the uh, push rod down, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, that moves remarkably freely. Okay. Oh, the real fun is I've now got to bag that head gasket. Jesus! The size of the 
wolf pit. Definitely a stock valve though. Turn down me. In theory, I shouldn't have done that because that could have pushed the liners out of the block. I suspect the head gasket's holding them on. Cool. Tonight's misadventure is to hopefully measure. The valve lift with this cam and these rockers, these push rods, etc, etc, etc. Because I know it's written in black and white in the manual. But I'd like to check it before I make assumptions that it does follow the manual. Because it ain't necessarily so. And then after I check that. After I've checked that, we'll then dismantle it again, then take all the valves out, except for the valves in number one, but we'll take the springs off them, put it all back together again. And then check how much total clearance there is with no spring on. How far can I push that down before it touches the piston, basically. And I suspect it will be most of the way. As in, drop the valve levels of, uh, of clearance. Because the combustion chambers on this are awfully deep. So this is just measuring for clearances and then I know how much room I've got before I run into valves if I have tall pistons or pistons with domes on them which I suspect will be the route that I'll go. Engines with 9 16 inch studs Stud nuts on manifold side and 5 8 inch stud nuts on the other side are 100 pound feet for both sizes. <sighs> My torque wrench does not have pound feet, but it does have kilogram meters. entertaining with my wobbly engine stand. Oh, that hurt. So yes, health warning. When you're turning that crank pulley, um, watch out for the slight pinch point between the bottom of the pulley and the uh, front engine mount bracket. Just a slight health warning. Because that hurt quite badly. And there we are, we're now back. Top dead centre, number one. And I still have all my fingers. Fantastic. Level. 
wel, so I should be where the marks on the crank are on the Rocker pedestal bolts, lash caps. Caps go on the exhaust. That is quite a large blus blood blister I now have. Slick. Tighten up. That puffs and whistles. So that's a start. Right. Oh my god. There we go. Now it's time for the precision side of this whole shit show. If I have any precision left in my fingers after I squeezed it all out of them. Okay, so what we've got there is effectively half an inch wound into that. So if that winds all the way back down to the full zero, then we have half an inch of travel. Right. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 thousandths, 200 thousandths, 300, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 70. Ah, that looks like it stopped there. 370. 371 thousandths of valve lift. Not bad. Let's write that down somewhere. Marvellous. So now we know. Time to strip all this back down. Strip the valves out the head. What time are we on? You know what? Fuck it, it's 20 past 7. And I'm hurting quite badly. Time to go home and medicate with gin.